Hello, Fearless Gamers, and welcome to another episode of Touching Base here on Fearless Games. Well, welcome back, everybody. First well, episode uh, of the not, summer. You're not welcome. I don't even know why you're in this house. I'll go. Wait, we're in a house? I thought we were in a studio. Look like a house. House studio. 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 House. Studio. House. Alrighty, so. Hi. Let's get started with the news. What news do we have, everybody, out here? Well, you're our dystopian uh, wars rep, aren't you? I, I guess I am. <laughs> uh, apparently, the dystopian wars has started to uh, has released their aerial uh, fleet starters, which is very cool. So now you have your navy, your air, your land forces, and your airships, and That's all cool. steampunk things need airships. It's a rule, and now you have like a nice starter for every great. That's cool. Combat. So no matter what floats your boat, you got a starter set to start it with if you want to do dystopian wars. It doesn't have to be a boat. Nope. No. Nope. It could be a steamship. It could be an airship. Yeah. It could be a tank. It could be a giant tank. I like oh, tanks. Cool. All right. And what other news do we have today? New flyers from Games Workshop. And I don't mean flyers like sheets of paper that advertise things. I mean like things planes. With planes. But th those are new too for the <clears throat> for the flyers. There will be new flyers for flyers. Right. Yes. Right. Flyers but for flyers. but that's not the important. But important part <laughs> is that there's there's planes that you will fly and bomb your boat. Okay, they're not all planes though. Games Workshop has announced the release of finally the Necron flyer kit, which Very will nice. do both planes that they have. A new Storm Talon for the Space Marine Codex, which is basically just a tiny helicopter mm -hmm. made for like support stuff. Yeah, it's, it's a VTOL. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a helicopter without propellers. <laughs> My, pers and <laughs> My personal favorite, the new Orc Bombers. Now, on top yes. of everything, the Orcs actually got three new flyers. It's all one, one the best. Box, one is a, like wow. a fighter fighter, one is a bomber, and one's like a hybrid between the two. Yeah. If you check out the new um, the new White Dwarf um, magazine, they have the entries for the new vehicles. Plus, you get the extra spine of that dude. Get to see the face of that space marine Yay. wielding that combi plasma thing. Who do we know that wears that? I don't know. But, kind of dark angel, I think. No, that's that's that's, that's no no. no. It's clearly got to be blood angels. Uh, they love green. Of they, no, they love green. Yeah. No. Green's the color of blood. No, it's true. Uh, they're, they're, they're warp spiders. Mmm, mm. Eldar. They're Eldar tricking us into thinking they're Orc that. That's a good point. New I was expecting Eldar. it to actually be like an orc head on there and then to be screwing <laughs> with us, but... But so now, no. we... So, and also our last bit of news is... Look at wallets. The GW price increase has happened once again. Yeah. Sadly. Yep, Games Workshop has done their... What's now been coming like their annual price increase. Yeah. Yeah. And Certain items have gone up as, as high as 67%. Uh, Thankfully, the ones that have gone up that high are accessory things like uh, template sets, stuff like that. Stuff that you you probably already have if you've been in it, mm -hmm. uh, or that you can photocopy out of a book and don't release. Really right, right. Um, most you know, m most models and such have uh, they're between two and twenty four percent higher. So not. Yeah, most too people, awful, but yeah. yeah. Most people are going to notice like the Necron um, command barges went from 33 to like 37 or 40. Mm -hmm. The Land Raider, I think, is one of the biggest price hiking yeah. models where it went up to 10, a full ten dollars for it yeah. went from 60 mm -hmm. to, to 75. Yeah, and so, the, uh, uh, 15. The, what's it called? The Blood Angel Flyer. Oh, the Storm Raven. That also went up to something trip. like 80 something dollars. So, yeah. but it happened. It's you know now for just to clear up for anything before you know we get. We, Launched with all these rage. these rage with Pumpy comments. Breaks, Pumpy breaks. We um, here at Fearless Games, we are not we 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 are not happy that the price increase happened, but we understand Games Workshop side of the it's fence. It's a business, and we understand your side of the fence. So we're not you know we're not we're not trash talking it, but we're not praising it. Yeah, yeah. I mean I make I make minimum wage making coffee. It hurts. But they're a business. They gotta stay afloat somehow. Bottom line, it is what it is. You can't, you can't uh, stop it. You can't go against it. It's happened, whether you want to or not. That's it. At the same time, it's a hobby. It's not a required expense. And all hobbies, whether you're zooming up a car to go down a quarter mile, or you're paying up managers to fight in a war zone, is expensive. So you have to understand, it's gonna be a bit expensive. At the same time, it really isn't gonna affect me too much and I say it's because I haven't bought a model from them in a while because I have everything I needed when I do buy I buy what I want yep. it's gonna hurt people just getting into the hobby and yeah. I do believe we have a topic for that yeah, yeah. speaking of which so recently we've been talking about how to get into a game how to budget out your game what kind of supplies and stuff you would need for the game and alternates to buying say from the person you wish to purchase the game from mm -hmm. 
Now it's time to start building that army. Yeah, you have everything you need. Make your right, start. Now make your dreams become a reality. So yeah. now we normally start over there. So why don't we go ahead and start with James? If you're new, you have nothing. So you gotta start from the ground up. And there are starter sets out there for any type of war game. Doesn't matter what company it is, chances are it has a starter set. Why? It gets you started. It kind of that's the lure to get you to bite and play the game. Mm -hmm. Now, first things first is whatever game it is. 40k, War Machine, I don't know nothing about War Machine, this guy does, I don't know anything about it. Um, Dystopian Battletech, Wars. Dystopian Wars, if you play, I don't Infinity. know, Infinity, Malifaux, I don't, BFG, BFG I personally don't care what you're playing. Game. I don't care what you're playing, play it. Um, always needs a list. Yes. Some games require compulsory units, like in 40k I can tell you, HQ troops, you need those. Yeah. Maybe do a little planning, it's always good to start with the list and figure out what you can buy to um, best maximize your budget because you want to make money go far. So getting that fancy fancy Devastator squad may not be necessary right now. That yeah. tactical squad is though. One thing that I didn't do when I was starting, when I was doing my Black Templars before, you know, my first army, um, I didn't make a list before I started. I went, well, I like this HQ, and, and yeah, I guess I'll just get some normal Space Marines, and I'll paint them up, and I'll put them on the field, and then I'll get completely hosed and completely lose every fight because I don't have a coherent force. Now, I don't mind that kind of thing. I don't play these games to win. I play to put little dudes on a table and roll some dice and joke around with my buddies. But I'm not most people. Uh, if you really intend on having a force that will eventually be formidable on the battlefield plan before you you like buy dudes and make dudes have your list you know at least planned and, and complete if not fully tweaked because that's something that you know sometimes Takes you gotta play to get to it but um don't jump in feet first with your eyes closed it was a bad idea <laughs> going with that with the compulsory choices and everything um I, I didn't jump in with my eyes closed, but I did just buy stuff because they were cool. I have a Scout Squad. I'm not using a Scout Squad because I like power armor too much. So I have it just sitting there. Maybe I'll paint it up one day, but it's, it's an expense I didn't have to buy, but I did because I thought it was going to be cool. So going with that and then get your compulsories and you're pretty much good to go. Now with Space Marines, you're going to be kind of lucky. That tactical guy with Bolter, you can be a Bolter guy in a Devastator Squad. You can be on a yeah. command squad with a Bolter. Certain things will have that ability for you, but make sure you're definitely getting what you need, not necessarily what you want. What you want can come later, but you're, you're, ta you're trying as a new player to get into the game, to learn the game and start playing the game. And you don't want to have that land raider sitting there, as cool as it is, all the time just sitting there going, man, I got a Land Raider and an HQ. I really can't learn this game too well with that. Yeah, <laughs> and HQ Land Raider is not a troop choice. Nope. Well, what I like to do with, um, when I start building any type of force, first off, you know, once I have what I decide I'm gonna get and everything, there's a couple things I first look into. First and foremost, I look into, surprisingly, I go by most expensive first, because I find the sooner I get them, huge price pointed item out of the way, the faster I start building up the rest of the force. Mm -hmm. So if you've got like, you know, two land raiders and a couple of troop dudes, you then start going, okay, I'm saving up for the land raider, I'm saving up for the land raider, buy the land raider, save up for the next one, buy them. Hey, these troops are not that expensive anymore yeah. and they start coming in a little bit quicker. I yeah, feel it like- It feels quicker. At the very in a sense, I kind of do like the band-aid rule. Get the pain over with first, that way the rest goes quicker. <laughs> Another stuff I usually also work on is, is I try to see what kits are out there that utilizes my dollar to the highest expense. Like a good example is for those who want to do Dark Angels and do Samuel and do the Ravenwing. The Ravenwing box set comes with six bikes, which I think are each like 20 bucks a piece. Something like that. A land speeder, which is a good 30, 40 dollars. And an attack bike, which is like 20, 25 dollars. Mm -hmm. It ends up, I think, being the cost of just buying the three bikes with that kit, so you're essentially getting the attack bike and the land speeder yeah. for free. It's a very I did good something investment. similar. I did something similar with the Battle for Black Reach box. Mm -hmm. um, I was starting my orc army and I needed two defcoptas. Uh, defcoptas at the time were something like 45 bucks a, a, a pop, and the Bla Battle for Black Reach box I think was only about 100 bucks. Yeah, uh, I might have even gotten on sale. Um, so I ended up paying 10 bucks more for my two Defcopters, a rulebook, 
bunch of templates, stuff I didn't have. More orcs? I had a whole lot of orcs that I could work with. And a nice space marine force, should I ever need some marines? Or should anybody I know need some marines? So things like that uh, really can help you get a lot of your force real fast for cheaper than you would get it otherwise. And like they now have the new Space Marine Drop Pod set, which is just, you basically are getting a drop pod for 10 bucks and a squad of 10 marines, yeah. which is yeah. really nice. There's also stuff like with the new Necron series where they actually rigged it where you can either make the Annihilation Barge or the Command Barge, rig it to do both, and get a Necron Overlord at the same time for $13 more than just buying the Necron Overlord by himself. Yeah. So, so if you I got you 13 both, bucks, yeah. I got my HQ, and I've got him a dedicated transport, or that heavy support that I really want if I don't want to put him on a transport. Which is a very good deal right there. I can say that um, going off of the uh, the Band-Aid thing from before, you know, buying the expensive bits first, um, if you're the kind of person who's going to have to save up for those larger parts of your army, one thing to consider is that if you buy the smaller parts first and you get them painted up, but then you have to save up for your land raider, your your monolith, uh, stomp, or your monolith, fire whatever. Um, that's one way to really put a huge stymie on your your progress painting, because you're gonna theoretically go through weeks to months, depending on how long it takes you to save, where you're not painting anything. So when you finally get the model, it's like cool. I'm not in the habit of painting anymore. I don't feel like painting right now. And then it never gets painted, and you never finish. Yep. Happened to me. Happened with my orcs. Orc bikers, incidentally, when you're working for minimum wage, are very, very expensive. <laughs> um, so I ended up ha you know, buying the orcs, but I wasn't in a place to really paint them. I was like, mm, cool, I'll do it later. I still haven't opened them. Yeah. Uh, with that, I, I can also agree with that with my Imperial Guard. I bought all my infantry. I did like an infantry uh, thing heavily with a couple of Valkyries or Vendettas. And I bought the Vendettas last, last, and I'm still working on them because it, it was so long, they're so different, and it wasn't the money thing, it was more of just the sudden shift to doing the big stuff last. It's, it really is better to usually start with most of the big stuff in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Just so everyone gets a concept of time, he bought the, he started this force two years ago, yep. and it's still not done. Nope. That's really all that's left, is that one part. We started our Imperial Guard at the exact same time, and you mm -hmm. finished yours in like, what, eight months? A little bit, yeah, roughly. Yeah, it's around the same cool. time I started my, yep. my orc army. Yeah. I, I have, I've done um, none. Yeah. Um, furthering, going back, the list is, again, the most important part. When it comes down to it, it's going to be lame, but the six Ps are really important. You know, proper prior planning prevents poor performance. Whoa! <laughs> yeah. Hold on! Whoa! Where yeah, did you where with, did you get that from? I can't tell you where I got that. You from. need you need to tell me after we're done filming where you I got will. that from yeah. so I can make fun of you. <laughs> because and it, that it's sounds true. like some retail nonsense. It isn't. It actually isn't retail because nonsense where I got that from. But it's true. It, again, the wow. most important thing is Whew. planning things beforehand. What were they again? One more time for the cameras. Proper prior planning prevents poor performance. Oh, this oh, sounds like something. You I would learned. know a lot about poor so performance, wouldn't you? But yeah, he loses all his games a lot. A lot lately. Uh, it really is important to sit down and figure out what you want your list to do. You found your game, you found the group you want to play, but how do you want to play them? Are they going to be aggressive and assaulty? So you have to think about how they're going to do that assault and figure out what units are best for that. And once you figure out your list and write like 15 lists, it's always good. When I started playing, I'm starting into Infinity, and I spent about four or five hours straight playing with the army builder, figuring out what I wanted to build so I knew what I wanted to buy. Time well spent. Yeah. Absolutely I mean, time well spent. Definitely awesome. better to figure out what you want to buy instead of just buying something you think it'll work for you and then realizing you're not going to use that at all while you're still in your planning stage. So spend time planning. It's really the best thing you can do. One other thing that I think I know it's a really advanced technique, but I think it's really worth taking the time to invest in it, is when you get a kit, see what you can do to stretch that kit to its limit. Maximize the A potential. good example is with the Eldar, <clears throat> with X arches. I make it a point to make it where all of my X arches arms are detachable, mm -hmm. so I can put any set of weapons on them that I yeah. need without having to buy a new kit because I ended up gluing their arms on and now they're stuck with yeah. a scorpion biting blade or the scorpion um, power claw. You can do the same thing with the uh, space marine dreadnoughts. Space marines, yeah, you can also do dreadnoughts, tau. assault marines. Like, the there's... tau well versed in this. Yeah. Yeah. Any tau player should have magnetized or pinned XV8s. It's just cheaper and better. 
And even if you don't want to go with magnetizing, since you're probably going to already purchase the items already, pinning is also a good thing. I have noticed a lot of people that don't want to do magnetizing but still like the pinning. They use thumbtack, so they pin the, per the, pin the item, then put a little bit of thumbtack in the eye area and pin through it. So the pin gives them stabilization, the thumbtack prevents it from moving, and mm. it's basically a poor man's magnet. Yeah. 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 If you happen to be the kind of person who's nervous about doing this kind of thing, I'm one of them. I don't do a lot of pinning, I don't have a lot of things that I think are really requisite. I have one pinned model, it's a Space Marine Dreadnought, uh, it's a from Forge World, a very, you know, awesome model. I was too nervous to do it myself, I had this guy do it, because he's been doing it a lot longer. Don't be afraid to ask your friends to help you out with stuff like that, because yeah. yeah. that's what they're for, it's it's mooching. It's <laughs> there for mooching. Yeah, he's done that too with a I bunch have. of pen and I, I, My, my first pen and engine, I looked at it, I tried, I'm like, how do, and you had to do it for me. And then when I tried to do it with my Inquisitor cameras off, you know, the dude in the chair, I have the, the metal one now, it's in fine cast, great. Uh, I tried to pin it myself, I tried about 15 times, with a bunch of little divots in them, and eventually I said, I can't do this, please do it for me. Mm -hmm. And it was great that he was nice, that I had a nice enough friend that could do it, that had the experience. Uh, it's good way to learn, at least, try and yeah, show a couple Yeah, have your friends show you, yeah. too, so you can do it yeah. later. Um, I think another, it now. <laughs> another crucial part to making an army is painting. Yeah. And so, one thing you should do, again, plan ahead with, with what you want to paint it as. I didn't do that for my Black Templars, and they ended up looking like a ragtag mess. Which, cool if you're going for that kind of thing, but if you want your, you know, noise marines to be a specific purple with specific, you know, uh, trim is the word I'm looking for. Plan that ahead. Don't do that as you're painting the first model and then go, well, I hope I can do this for all the models. Because <laughs> it's just a bad approach. And don't throw them. Like, yeah, well, you know. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, don't get so hung up on the paint job that it takes you a month and a half to do one dude or one squad. If you're just starting out, you're not going to be winning any Golden, Golden Demon Awards anyway. You know, if you've never painted a mini before, it's not gonna be the Mona Lisa. All you gotta do is make it look good from like three feet away, people know what it is, that's fine. And then as you get better, you'll get better at painting, you know, over time you'll pick up a trick here, or a friend will go, hey, well, why don't you try dry brushing that, and you'll Google what that means, you know, and then eventually you'll get better. But don't get so hung up on the models themselves being gorgeous that you don't make any progress making the army. Because if you don't have an army, you can't play the game. And if you're focusing too much on one squad, you never have an army. Thus, you'll never play the game. Yeah. Yes. And remember, we're talking, <clears throat> this is all about the new players out there. We've been through the ringer a little bit. We, we're mm -hmm. trying to pass on what we think works for anybody starting out because with the price increase, like we said here, and other companies, whatever, they're gonna, whatever they do, whenever they do it, who knows? But even if they don't, it's an expensive hobby. Let's be serious for a second. I could take the money and invest it somewhere else, but I do it because it's fun, and the whole point is to have fun. Don't go jumping right into it with, you know, object source light painting. Don't go jumping into super magnetization if it's not your yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I personally would rather see a new player get their models, fully assembled, painted, glued instead of pinned and magnetized, getting into the game, and then going, oh, you know what? Now I know. I'm more confident I can move on. Painting, however, is a very good technique to learn, because not just for in, uh, enter swapping out the pieces, it's for rigidity on the miles. It helps keep the pieces on there, especially mm -hmm. the games that still do pewter, painting these essential. Yeah. yeah. For the one thing is like for the longest time I refused to pin because I was like, no, it's too complicated, it's too difficult, I'm never gonna do it, it's not worth it, I'll just deal with the model breaking all the time. I then just actually just went and did it once, and then I went, oh, this wasn't as hard as I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> Like, a good example is pinning legs. Okay, most legs, their hips, you can just drill right through once, plant the leg on, drill right through to the leg again, boom, it's pinned. It's not, it seems more intimidating than it actually is. For those who are heavily intimidated by it though, for your first army, it's okay to glue your models without pinning them in your first army. Don't get us wrong, we love pinning, it's a good call. But if you glue your models at first, and later on wish you had pinned it, we mentioned in a previous episode, there's a beautiful product called Simple Green. You can get the glue off your models. You can, you can disassemble it without breaking it, so you can pin it instead later on when you feel more confident in it. Yeah. There's, there's pretty much no such thing as a point of no return in this kind of thing. So sure. go for it. 
you know, make your decisions, go for them. If you hate them, you still have models. You can still take them apart, repaint them. You can still turn your ultramarines into blood angels. It's not impossible. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking or you of can that, take them and them. For, trying to, the for trying to practice advanced techniques, some of the space marines have great upgrade kits. Mm -hmm. Like a good example is, is the Dark Angels um, Veteran Sergeant Kit. It's supposed to be like, in essence, that's supposed to be the sergeants in the squads. So if you buy a kit with six of them, those are six Space Marine normal models. You can then start practicing, you can practice your pinning, your magnetizing, and all this stuff, and you won't be hurting yourself because those are models that were left over. Yeah. And if they end up surviving, then you've got a combat squad. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You know, and another great thing for that is, like again, the Battle for Black Reach kind of box oh, set. Yeah, you where go through that thing. You can have so many extra models from something like that if you're only buying it for a certain group. Yeah, so if you have extra models left over, if you have a friend who's got models he's not using, ask. What oh. they're for? What's a really good thing I'm thinking about is when you're doing your first mo group and your first army and you're painting it, really think about how much you want to paint. In other words, just don't say, I want to do orcs, and but I don't really like painting that much, because that's not going to work out for you, because an orc army is a giant horde. And if you don't like painting that much, you're not going to finish it. So usually you want to start with something I don't want to say elite, but you want to think about it. it's like, do you, I really want to spend, you know, hours painting a hundred little guys, or I just want to paint 30 little guys and two tanks. You have to think about that ahead of time. That's very important. Cool. Going with that, if you're going to have a combination of infantry and vehicles, or gigantic jacks and little dudes, I don't know what yeah. call them, I don't play that, but if you do, that's great. Um, or whatever it is, a big vehicle versus a small vehicle in the Stopian Wars. I don't know. Look at me, I don't know. But uh, you can do the squad of little guys, and then, you know, to take a break, instead of taking a break from going painting, I have, for example, I'll use my Space Marines. I did a tactical squad, all 10 guys. I assembly lined it. I hated myself at the end. Just because it's repetitive. Then I went and did a tank. Oh boy, how different and fun. And then I went back to painting miniatures, and I was like, this is lightning fast, because I don't pay a tank. <laughs> so, you can, if you switch it up that way, you can kind of keep the variation going and stay in the painting process. All right, so I think that basically what we're really all trying to say, for the most part, is plan out what you're going to be doing first so you know what to get. X, figure out what you would need, what you would want to buy first, and then buy it. Yes. Paint and assemble as you go along. Don't be afraid to ask for help. And try new things. Yes. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Those and are so, really the core. that's really it. Thank you all for watching. Um, if you have any suggestions for topics or, you know, want to give us your opinions or anything, drop a comment down here. You can even PM us. And if you want to ask one of us specifically, just call it out. Yep, and literally in the subject yeah. title, just put the name of the person you want. Yep, if you don't, if you don't matter who it is, just you know, make it general. Yep. And we testament, we we do respond to those comments. Yep. Very much so. We swear. Yes. So that's all for right now. Until next time, fearless gamers. Take care. Um, are we still performing? I don't know. Or is, or is this just us being stupid? We're only being stupid. Um, um, you're being stupid so with that shiny face.